Okay, so this um, lesson is just going to be a quick review of solving quadratic equations by using the square root method. And I just wanted to remind you that we can use this method when we're missing that bx term, that b term, or if we have square of a binomial. And remember, one of the great things about this method is that we're just simply using inverse operations. And we have to remember when we take the square roots to do plus or minus the square root. Um, so that's um, two, a couple of the biggest things to remember about that. Okay, I think I can fit the first problem on this board. Okay, so here's the first problem. I would suggest you write these down in your notebook um, so that you have some more examples to go back and look at. Label it so you know that we're using the square root method here, um, even though we're not keeping really formal notes right now important to make sure that we know what our what we're writing in our notebook represents. Okay, so we're solving for x. Notice we're missing that bx term. There's no single x. We only have x squared. So this is really easy. All we have to do is add 38. And I hope I don't mess up because I don't have my work worked out in front of me. So catch me if I mess up. Equals 81. I would then divide by 4. Some of you like to take the square root at this point, but we wouldn't want to do that. We don't want to take the square root until we have that x by itself. Okay, so this would be x squared equals 81 over 4. Now, I'm not going to divide this. Um, I, you can, and you can do that with your calculator. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that because now the next step is to go ahead and take plus or minus the square root. And the reason that it was good not to change this um, to a decimal or divide it is because I could, both of these are perfect squares. So I can very easily do this in my head. So that would give me that x equals positive or negative 9 over 2. And if you said 4 point positive or negative 4.5, that would be okay as well. Okay, so there's the first example of a problem you could see. Remember, at any point, pause the video and make sure you get everything written down. Ooh, this didn't erase very well. Okay, so one thing that you can do is you're looking at these problems. If you want to write down the problem and pause the video, see if you can do it yourself, and then turn it back on and see if you did it correctly. That would be a really good way to practice to see and make sure we know that we're doing this right. Okay, so this one, we have a square of a binomial. So that's why we can use the square root method on this one. Remember, you can't touch anything inside the parentheses until we get rid of the exponent. So I'm going to go straight to taking positive or negative the square root. Okay, so that leaves me x minus 5. Now, 49 is a perfect square, so I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of it. So, x, um, positive or negative 7. And then the next step would be to add 5. Now, be really careful here. This is one place where everybody was messing up, or some people were. It's not positive or negative 5. It's positive or negative 7. So, x is going to equal 5 plus Seven, or it's going to equal 5 minus 7. Remember, this is the part that's positive or negative. The 5 is still positive. It's still adding. So that means x equals 12 or negative 2. Just a reminder, these are our solutions. Think about what are the other names. Solutions roots, seeing if you're thinking zeros, and what's the last one? x-intercepts. Okay, so that's another example. And I want to do one more. Um, you're going to see some like this on your practice assignment, so I just want to make sure that um, we know how to do them. So let me erase that. I'm going to get some cleaner here. Of course, I didn't pick out the best boards. Okay, so the last one, 
Feel free to write it down, turn off the video, pause it, see if you can do it yourself, and then check it. Okay, so a little bit more complicated here. So I hope that you're thinking we would first subtract 21, just like if it were a two-step equation. Okay, so now our problem looks like that. Then I would divide by 2. Gives me x minus 3 squared equals 10. And now we're just down to that square of a binomial. So take positive or negative the square root. Now this time, 10 is not a perfect square. I'm not going to calculate the square root yet. I want to go ahead and do it all at once with my calculator because we talked about that if we do that now, we have to round it, and it could end up changing our answer a little bit. So now we're adding 3. So we're going to do 3 plus the square root of 10, and we're going to do 3 minus the square root of 10. So x could be either one of these. Now I brought some graphing calculators home, but I think that probably any calculator um, is going to work on this. Um, you could also still use Desmos. So 3 plus the square root of 10. If I round to the hundredths place, that gives me 6.16. Or 3 minus the square root of 10 gives me negative 0 0.16. Okay. So hopefully that helps refresh your memory on the square root method.